A week that started on a high note with a well-reviewed primetime address ended with a whole lot of expletives coming from the president. President Trump, according to sources, lashed out at his senior staff after the afterglow was overshadowed by more Russian news and the recusal of Jeff Sessions. Sources tell CNN the president complained that his staff were getting, they were getting in their own way, allowing missteps to stop the momentum after his speech to Congress. Staffers are clearly feeling the pressure, with some sources saying that Chief of Staff Reince Priebus is taking the brunt of the president's anger right now. Joining me is CNN's chief national correspondent, host of Inside Politics, John King, for more on this. So, John, all of this reporting is that he's just furious over how last week played out. What are you hearing is happening in, inside the White House right now? And, Kate, this reporting also gives us a glimpse of his state of mind. You were just talking about the state of play of this stunning allegation that his predecessor wiretapped him. Well, you need to consider the president's state of mind as he makes these allegations against the former president of the United States. He believes, we are told, and you're right, he lashed out Friday at his staff in an Oval Office meeting at the White House. When he got to Florida, he lashed out some more. He routinely at night picks up the phone and calls old friends outside of government. He has talked to them, saying he thinks his staff is getting in their own way. He does believe uh, that all these leaks are part of a calculated effort by the intelligence community and the broader federal bureaucracy to undermine his presidency. Now, some friends say he seems a little paranoid. Other friends say, hey, wait a minute. There have been a lot of leaks. He's not paranoid. There are leaks to support this. And so he's in this mood now, and he's at a key moment in his presidency. There are key votes coming up on Obamacare, key debates coming up on tax reform. And he is consumed by this, partly at his staff, partly by the leaks, and partly by this sense that there's this, he, he believes, Kate, I'm told by several people who have spoken to him. And Chris Ruddy, the CEO of Newsmax, went on the record with this over the weekend, he saw President Trump in Florida, and he said he's as mad as I've ever seen him. He used a word that I won't repeat on daytime television about Trump's mood right now. And right. this affects the conduct of the administration in the sense that the president's senior staff is all looking around, looking over their shoulder, because they know the boss is really mad. It also impacts Republicans in general and Republicans that are having to answer questions and face questions about this latest tweet and this highly charged allegation uh, against his predecessor. I mean, you have Republican after Republican answering to this, none of them saying that they've seen the evidence, some of them leaving open the possibility that it should be uh, investigated by the intelligence committees. What kind of a bind does this all put Republicans in? Well, there's an interesting dynamic in Washington that most Republicans you talk to, they say they try to avoid all this drama around the president. They want to focus on the nuts and bolts of repealing and replacing Obamacare. They but want how to deal with the very, exactly, the very difficult internal Republican feuds on tax reform. They want to ignore all this, but most Republican senators and a lot of people around town now have specifically assigned aides. They tell them every morning, I need to know what the president has tweeted. I need to know when I walk outside what I'm going to be asked. I was at a social event this weekend, and you started to approach Republican senators, and they would put their hand up and they say, no, 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 please. Like they didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to talk about it. But it's part of the dynamic in Washington. They hope it goes down. You hear a lot of talk that they wish the president would, A, get over his Twitter habit. They know that's not going to happen. They keep wishing it. They wished it in the campaign. They wish it now. Uh, what, they try, what they say is keep your head down, do our work, and hopefully as he gets into the job, this is day 46, as the president is on the job more, that he will recalibrate himself some. But most of them have given up the hope. They think the drama is going to be constant, and they just somehow need to figure out how to do their job. Well, also happening, I mean, the drama or big news, at least, continuing. This hour, we're going to hear about this re revised travel ban. I mean, that announcement coming today. Does that help the president get back where he wants to be as he starts this week? It's interesting if you look at the polling, the president's approval rating, he did not get a bounce in our brand new poll out of his big speech Tuesday night. That's a disappointment to a White House. You want a big bounce out of that right. speech. However, some of his policies do remain more popular than the president himself. So if the president can be focused on policy, now the travel ban is quite controversial. The travel ban will end up back in court. But still, when he's focusing on policy, he's on safer ground. Certainly his base is with him on some issues like the economy. He has a bigger base uh, than he has on other issues like the travel ban. The most interesting thing, Kate, you're about to see right now, this travel ban is a signature issue from the Trump campaign. Because of the state of play in town at the moment, the President of the United States will not be at the event. That right. speaks volumes. Speaks that volumes. That says quite a bit. Great to see you, John. Thanks so much.